All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. I'm Laura Rogers, and this is SharePoint Power Hour, broadcasting live on YouTube. And uh, our Power Hour is all about business solutions in SharePoint. So what is business solutions? That is everything that uh, is basically not custom development, custom programming, or having to go in, a, in the central admin or go in the server and do a, any server administration. So business solutions is things like BI, um, even some a little branding, uh, governance, user adoption, topics like that, workflows, SharePoint designer, um, I don't know, user interface, anything that's not uh, de uh, developer or admin stuff. So. Um, Every week we cover different topics, and this week we happen to have Jennifer Mason as our guest star, and we are all going to be talking about you know 2013 cool SharePoint 2013 coolness. And so let's go ahead and start off by introducing everybody everybody real quick. I'm Laura Rogers. I work at Rackspace, and I am um, my background is just you know started off as a server admin type of person but moved into the more of the user user interface and find you know workflows and data view web parts and stuff like that because I enjoy that a lot more than you know looking at backups and logs and junk like that <laughs> <laughs> so that's me uh, let's see I'll let uh, we'll all go and then we'll let Jennifer go last since she's the guest and then uh, so I'll let Joel you go ahead and go next all right. Hello, everyone. I am Joelle Farley. I am. Um, I also work for Rackspace as a SharePoint Business Solution Consultant, uh, and I work with same same kind of stuff. I work with uh, SharePoint Designer Workflows, InfoPath, um, and then basically just taking out of the box stuff, you know, as far as it will uh, let me take it, uh, and then just building d different business solutions and that kind of thing. Um, and I actually I come from a training and um, training and development background. Um, so I did that before I got into um, SharePoint. So, all right. All right, Stephen. Oh, we can't hear you, Stephen. We can kind of hear, like, residual audio. There we go. There we go. Yeah. I had a, a siren again in my background, so I turned off my mic for a second. Uh, my name is Stephen Wilson. I specialize in all the stuff that Laura just referred to as junk. So... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I also do uh, a lot of uh, stuff with sort of the basic user interaction, uh, you know, when customers come to us with, you know, more minor problems before I have to send them to Joel or Laura for a bigger solution that they can't get uh, with just the, the easy tools in SharePoint. Okay. And we're missing Mike today, by the way. He's sick. So uh, we'll go on. Go ahead, Tavis. Hey, my name is Tavis Lovell, and I also work for Rackspace, and I uh, am specializing in reporting and dashboarding, so all things kind of business intelligence on the Microsoft and SharePoint stack. Very cool. Okay, Jennifer Mason, tell us a little bit about you. Cool. So I'm uh, Jennifer. I do a lot of the same things as Joelle and Laura. So I help users make the most out of SharePoint using everything out of the box. So no semicolons, no HTML. Um, so just anything you can do with SharePoint out of the box to solve a business problem is where I spend my time focusing. And um, right now I'm predominantly working with uh, internal Rackspace to build out some solutions so that they can use internally. Great. Yeah, there's a lot of great internal stuff with Rackspace with SharePoint 2013, isn't there? That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, so we've... So, um, uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to start asking you questions. Go for it. <laughs> so, so Jennifer, before uh, we that SharePoint 2013 was rolled out at Rackspace, did you have any kind of initial planning and things like that that you had to think through before just kind of installing it and letting people loose on it? Yeah, so we worked with um, understanding what existed at Rackspace. So Rackspace has got a very unique culture in that... Um, there's a lot of server experience just in general. So if you have the ability to get to a server and get a license, it's amazing what you can configure. So I think even to this day, there's multiple SharePoint farms that kind of exist in various forms and places under people's desks, some in data centers, some managed by IT, some not. And so because um, Rackspace had never come out and said, this is our SharePoint solution and this is what we want to do, people would kind of go on their own and build out their own farms. And so with 2013, they really wanted to change that um, 
So they took an approach of Rackspace becoming its own customer. So we did with Rackspace exactly what we would do with clients. So we started out um, identifying who the business owners were and then sitting down and coming up with, okay, here's our goal of what we want SharePoint to be. So at Rackspace, they want it to be a self-service tool that Rackers can use on their own to build the solutions that they need. So not really anyone central inside of IT that is going to be uh, managing it for them. Um, but that they can manage it within their own, um, they can manage it within their own teams and use it however, um, however they need to. So uh, different things like that. So we did a lot of governance planning, figuring out if we were going to support it that way. How would the help desk support it? How would we have long-term um, SharePoint support to get people started? How would we do training? Different things like that. So there was quite a bit of planning that went into implementing it. Um, I guess just to get started, even. That's awesome. So there, there's all kind of, there are all kind of controls in place so that, you know, for example, if somebody wants a site, you have a whole provisioning process and like if, if a site goes out of date, then you have sort of like a deep provisioning, provisioning process and things like that or what, what is uh, that? They're static on the line. Can everybody mute themselves if they're not talking? Um, so I'm not, t uh, we don't necessarily have a deep provisioning status right now. Um, but what we have is a provisioning status, so you have to go through training. So there's a one-day jumpstart training that covers all the basic things you need to do to create a site, create um, apps and list in libraries, manage permissions, and how to work with SharePoint to take your business problem and convert it into um, a solution inside of SharePoint. So we have a one-day jumpstart training on that, and once you've gone through that jumpstart training, then you get access to create new sites. So I can actually show you guys um, cool. what our process looks like. I'm okay. loading that page right now. If there's anybody watching live, you guys feel free to ask questions as we go. There's a little comments box on the right in YouTube and feel free to just shout it out and we'll uh, let Jennifer know or whoever know that we have questions. So, all right. And uh, you have that little screen share button on the left if you haven't already found it. There you go. I did. What am I sharing though? I'm sharing the wrong screen, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. When you click screen share, it actually has a whole bunch of different things for you to, for you to choose from to pick which yeah. screen. And I chose the one that I thought I was supposed to be sharing. Oh. <laughs> Let's I kind of like the tunnel effect, though. Yeah, the infinite, was, infinite Google Hangouts. <laughs> crazy, yeah. yeah. Let's try this. Okay, so the right button is the wrong button, so I'm going to pick the wrong button and see if that's the right button. <laughs> it's one of those days, huh? <laughs> it is, y'all. Yay! Okay, so that's totally backwards, but this is the site. Um, so we had to come up with um, naming, a naming convention, and um, we had a couple of criteria that we had to hit. It had to fall off of Rackspace.com, which is also our public domain. And so that meant we needed to use a name that was internal, um, internal only, and that would never need to be used for a public marketing effort. So um, I think that picking the colors and names of internal systems might be the thing that takes the most amount of time. But we wanted to have something consistent, so everything inside of Rackspace actually falls under stuff. We have a uh, Racker stuff, which is our intranet um, type and informational pages. We have team stuff, which is where teams can collaborate and share together. And then we have my stuff, which is the my sites. So um, all of the URLs are kind of based off of that. But after you've been through training, you can go to Racker stuff and you can see a list of all of the sites that you have access to, as well as a simple info path form to create a new site. So you basically can come up here and fill out the form of, do you want an internet site, a blog site, a team site, or a test site? Um, so you can just come and select that and then it's going to ask you additional pieces of information and you'll hit OK. Um, we have a process that runs about every 45 minutes. Uh, we're just using a simple PowerShell script that's going to go look against the list. So it's a scheduled process that's going to run and then pick up the information and create the site. Cool. So anyone who's been through training can can come and come here and a site and get it created. So um, most of the time after you've been through training, that's all people all people need, and then they're kind of rocking and rolling for their groups. 
Um, so pretty simple process. We had looked at um, writing a custom code solution, but to be perfectly honest, we were not 100% sure what templates people were going to want, and we weren't 100% sure of all of the process pieces that we wanted. So the idea was, is well, let's go with PowerShell because it's simple enough to write against a SharePoint list, and then once we have you know streamlined some of those other pieces we can go back in and maybe do a list receiver or something like that so it's more instantaneous so um, that's kind of why we made the decision to go with that one um, and so the one the thing on the right is an info path form and yes. and the list on the left is, is that the content search web part Yes, yeah, so it's a content search web part with a custom display um, that some of our branding guys looked at doing. So it's got the logo from the site um, showing up there. Um, oh, so those are custom. Those are those little things called display templates and search. Yes, yes. So this is a display template that one of the guys wrote for us um, to kind of just show the site logo and then information about the site. This is definitely a work in process. Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, this is a work in, in, I guess, progress process. So this doesn't really look as good as we'd like it to look. We're actually transitioning to a new design and feel, which will look like this. Um, so this is going to be the new look and feel. So they're going to come to a page that looks like this, and it will say, you know, Racker stuff up there where it says Foundation Services. And then they can click here to get a list of all of the sites they have access to, and the form will be updated to go on this page. So that's our second revision of all of it. Um, but That's exciting. Yes, I'm really excited about that one. So that should all hit in um, Q1. We, this is actually, um, Laura, you asked if this was an InfoPath form. This is an InfoPath um, list customization. So if we go oh. look at the site contents, um, we went with uh, fairly simple, um, but we wanted to make it so it could show up easily on the page. So we just have a site collection request list. And so, the, and then we customize the form, the list form with InfoPath. So, I know in 2013 that isn't necessarily the path going forward, and InfoPath maybe isn't the the best tool to do that. But with the changes, <gasps> what? <laughs> with the changes that we were making, um, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter if we lose that front end piece of it. So, we decided to take the 15 minutes, customize the form, and be done with it, and not worry about having to do all of these other things or writing a, a .NET solution when InfoPath works just fine. So, this is an example of when I talk about using InfoPath in 2013, I talk about I use it sometimes, but other times I make a decision not to. This is one of those times that I simply just use it. And there's a lot of logic in the form that puts the data in a format that the PowerShell script can read directly. So the PowerShell script can go and, you know, they're they're pulling from a drop down and it says blog, but that might actually be, you know, STS pound one or something like that. So we've done the logic on the back end so the values in the list are exactly what um, the PowerShell script needs to run. And then once that happens, you get an email from the system that says, here's your new site collection. So do they have to get approval or anything to get these? Or are they just whoever wants one gets one? Um, if they've been through training. So once they've been through training, they can um, create whatever they want. If it throws an error because they're requesting something that's named something else, then um, I'll get the error. Um, I'll get a notification that an error went through and I can go do some research and pull from it. But in training, we talk to them about the importance of their building sites for their team. So go check and make sure there's no sites first and different things like that. But we're really putting that in the power of Rackers to do what makes sense for their groups um, and not have to go through these high levels of approvals. Nice. And so far, we haven't had... Um, too many issues. I think twice we've had the same group create different sites um, that were named the same thing, but in both cases I was able to, you know, introduce right hand to left hand and then they went away working together. So it was it was just because they didn't know, so it wasn't a big deal at all. Um, so if there's no more questions about that, I can show you our latest solution that we just deployed this week. I would love to see that. How about you guys? Okay. We don't we don't always have the insight. We're off here kind of we're doing more of this front facing stuff with, you know, in, projects with customers 
And uh, Jennifer gets to do all this get coolness with this internal stuff that we don't necessarily have uh, insight into all the time. Yes, Rackspace is my internal customer. So, <laughs> um, this Even the cool stuff we do do, we don't get to show anybody because it's a customer. That's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to be the cool one today. He said doo-doo. <laughs> Oh wow, Laura! Oh wow, Laura! <laughs> I just <laughs> can't take her anywhere. Okay. <laughs> okay, bringing it back, bringing it back. Um, this is the site that we did for Rack Health. So Rack Health is one of our internal departments um, that tries to get rackers healthy. And so um, I don't know if you guys on the phone know this, but we're getting a walking trail at the castle, and it's called the Christopher Walken walking oh, trail. Oh, cool. well, what, What's the castle, Jennifer? Oh, the castle is our headquarters, uh, Windsor Park Mall, so it's the castle. Um, but in, in honor of that starting, they're doing a 14-day fitness challenge. And so they needed a way that they could let rackers in Austin and San Antonio, because other remote locations didn't want to participate at this time, but Austin and San Antonio needed to come in, and you needed to be able to enter into a challenge and then store your information. So there are two levels of challenge. You could either do the entry-level challenge, which is like drinking... Uh, drinking a little bit of water, walking up a flight of stairs, walk a mile a day. Or you could do the advanced level, which is like real exercise. Um, so like running five miles, uh, jumping rope a thousand times, or 800 jumping jacks, or completing uh, one-minute drills of sit-ups, push-ups, and air squats. Doesn't that sound fun? Um, so they wanted people to be able to come in and track this and so this is an infopath form that the first time you log into the site if you came and said um, you know maybe I want to do the advanced level I can click on that and it's using a view inside of infopath to take us to the advanced level so then I can pick uh, pick my location I can pick my team so let's say that you know I was on the walking queens team and then I can pick my day um, this is programmed so that I can only pick up to two days ago so for instance if I came in here um, for the little calendar guy to open if I came in here and picked the fourth it's gonna give me a validation error because they really only want you to be able to go back two days and enter your results um, so I come back over here um, and then I could say you know, I did nine sit-ups, nine push-ups, nine air squats. I did 2,000 meters on the row machine. Run, forest, run. That's cute. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and did you complete the running, Jen A? And they love that um, because they felt like this was their homage to me because I made the site for them and my name is Jennifer so they were actually very <laughs> excited and had me put that in there at the last minute um, because that's my personal representation on the site. That is so funny. It was. I loved it. So then I hit, um, once I hit submit here, it's going to load and tell me, hey, your data has been loaded. So once I do that, I can click anywhere on the site and I can say view my progress and it's going to show me um, how much I did, the status, different things along those lines. Because I didn't run, I got no, not quite complete. But the cool thing is, is the next time that I go to that home page, it's going to remember that I selected the advanced challenge and I won't have to drill down into that before. So the InfoPath form is actually doing a look up to the list to find out if I already have an advanced entry. So it's not going to make me have to do that extra click again. Cool. I, so it's the same form, it's just got... Yeah, so as part of the InfoPath form, there's a field, a hidden field in the form that says status or... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, it says fitness level type. Are you advanced or intermediate? And so what it does is it does a lookup to this progress list based on the current user and finds out if they have an advanced entry already. And if they have an advanced entry, it loads the advanced form. If it has a beginner entry, it loads the beginner form. So it's an InfoPath form that's doing a lookup to its own list to find out what data already exists and then using that to set... Um, set so logic like on what gets displayed. It, it switches the view? Is that what it does? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. 
Um, so if I was to delete this entry and go back to the page, I'm going to get, again, the, the entry screen because I, ha I don't have any entries. So I can show the entry level one, which has got a, a few different pieces of information on it. So we don't have to do as much if we're over here. Um, I did it. Yes, I climbed the stairs. We had a lot of fun walking through these different pieces. Um, this time I will be on the bod squad. <laughs> I bet there are a lot of... Uh, interesting just little fun projects with all that internal stuff because Rackspace is just a fun place to work and we always have like you know just little weird you know things like that going on just all over the place little yes. fitness stuff and just community stuff and all that. So. Most definitely so this is one side I did there's another group of um, guys that came to me with needing help with a site and they wanted a site for uh, rackers that have home aquariums so a group of people okay. <laughs> and they set up home aquariums and they wanted a team site so that Very they could specific. share links. I was like, yeah, rock on. Um, so little did I know, at least two people on our SharePoint team are into aquariums. Randy Lee um, <laughs> is one of the aquarium guys. And then the, the internal radio station that we have, they have a KRAC site. So there's different things. Um, different things along those lines. So we are using SharePoint for a lot of fun. We're also using it for a lot of actual work. Um, so this site we have here is Strategic Deals. So this is a group of people that um, I guess when when proposals come in they're going to be handled one of two ways. They're going to be handled with uh, the small set of the salespeople that are working on it or it's going to go to a larger basically project management team that's going to manage the entire proposal engagement. And so this is the team that works there for that and so they kind of have a calendar here. This is an old this is all old data that I copied down to a test site um, but like when you click on documents they needed to be able to drill down into different components. Um, so let's see, it's opening this right now. It's thinking. Do you guys have any questions while it's thinking? Laura, I see your mouth moving, but I don't hear you. Sorry, I was just saying no questions yet from the people that are watching live. Okay. Um, so this one has got kind of a, an intermediate um, landing page that lets them drill down to other pieces. So this is actually highlighting my favorite new feature inside of 2013 because I think it's the easiest one for people to work with. Um, so if you want to make your site uh, fun where they've got these little buttons and you can click and go to other links, cool. um, there's a new list type. Um, so if you come down here and go to site contents, there's a list type called promoted links. And the promoted links list, so if we were to add a app, the promoted links list is going to allow you to basically point to an image and point to a link. And then it's going to create all of those tiles for you. So it's just a new list type. Um, Joelle, did you write a blog post about those or something recently? I wrote a blog post recently about oh, okay. it. Joelle may have too. Um, but I know I've, I've got one on mine. Did you write one too, Joelle? I didn't mean to cut you off and say, no, I did it. <laughs> oh, no, I just did a, that was just for my, in my presentation for SharePoint Saturday Atlanta. That's probably what you're thinking. Oh. Yeah. Maybe, Oops. yeah. Okay, so Jennifer's an idiot and clicked the wrong thing. Oh, I closed it. There we go. Yeah, I haven't even actually tried out the promoted links thing. All I've done is just heard about it, but that's really neat. It's so cool. I actually use it all of the time. Um, probably my number one used feature because everybody needs to drill down for navigation or for other things. And uh, users respond to it very well and because it's a stylized list it doesn't matter what images I put and like because my theme of this site is green it's going to change that background to green but if I change my theme it's going to retheme those images for me um, so it just works really well for building these navigation pieces so if we were to go in and look at the completed list that's already there 
It does have a link, like the limit. Have you noticed that it has like a, a limit to the the length of the link that you can put into it? Have you found? I actually haven't. I must not have tried to use any long uh -huh. length. What was your limit? I don't remember what the oh excuse me I'm like I have like suffering from a cough still but uh, I don't remember the exact length limit but I know that I was trying to basically set up like a a link that had some in, like like the info path links when we go in and we set it up so that when the user saves it it brings them back to a, a certain page that we want it to bring them back to oh uh, you put the source in there and everything yeah when I was trying to use those links it gave me an error that it was too long oh wow no I haven't hit that but that's really good to know um. I'd be interested to see what that is. So, it could be the 255 character limit. It might be I, something like that. I hate that limit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're not the only one. It's the limit that's really a limit, but only sometimes because it works yeah. for some people but not others. Yeah, that's fun to explain. Yeah. So it's just basically another SharePoint list. So I could come in here and you know edit the items or edit the entire list, and I'm basically just putting an image. Uh, a link location. If I put a description, it would put that on the button as well. And then if I want it to launch in the page or a new window, and then the order. Um, so like I said, we're doing this quite a few places. Um, when you said that, Joel, it made me think of another solution that we have that's actually using it um, to navigate to different locations inside of an InfoPath form. Um, Ooh, cool. Well, that's pretty cool. So, so this is our CSA intake site and this is using a combination of an InfoPath form and a, a URL query web part. So on this page, um, for instance, when I kind of hover over on-site audit, you could see at the bottom a little bit that it says question mark request type equals on-site audit. So that's passing a parameter to a page and then the InfoPath um, form on that page is using the query string URL filter to pass a parameter into the InfoPath form and display the right sections inside of the form. So you see that when you go to this page, it's asking questions about an on-site audit. But if I was to click a different one, like questionnaire or customer briefing, it's going to open up a different section in that same form. So we're actually combining this together to help users navigate into the specific pieces that they need. So this is one single InfoPath form um, with different sections and then based on the field type we select we're hiding or displaying the different sections so we can ask them the piece of information that they need. Um, and this is a solution that's pretty cool because there's a, there was a enterprise change and a team of five people went down to only two people and they were managing this entire process through email and so they had every salesperson inside of Rackspace could email this team and ask for this service and now they have a single place where they can say hey go give us this specific information and then they can track it for audit purposes and everything so that's this huge pretty cool yeah this is a pretty cool one so what do you use what tool do you use to create all those cute little images that you put in there um, it's a really great tool called the internet. <laughs> um, I will show you my trick to cheesy Jen Mason images. Uh, Microsoft.com slash office. <laughs> and then... It's just funny, every time I do these demos, Laura, I get asked that question. Uh, I just go to images and I search uh, with PNG in it and my most famous search is icon and then you get a plethora of cheesy clip art that works great. There's a great uh, free download called Metro Studio by a company called Sync Fusion, S-Y-N-C Fusion that it has all these little you know metro icons and it's just got hundreds of little things and you can click on it and you can change the colors and change the size of it and then just hit a button export it to PNG so it's a, another little fun way to create those cool well that's cool yeah I don't really do anything fancy for clip art and I know I drive real designers and developers nuts by what I pick but it works for what I do so like I said, I think that's probably a, 
Oops, I gotta go back to the the right one. That's probably the most commonly used tool inside of 2013. When I look at new things, there's not a ton of new things inside of 2013 compared to 2010. It's just the look and feel on the and the niceness of things is different. But this is one of those new apps that I really I just like to use. It fits into almost every solution um, that I'm doing. So, so in that community template new sh new type of site. Um, when you create it, that list of categories, is that the same thing? Is that a list of promoted links? Because it, you know, it looks like that. It's got, you know, when you hover over a category, it's got the little thing like that. Yeah. Probably. I, I don't know. I bet it is. It's also the, this is the same thing that is the getting started. When you create a new SharePoint site and across the top it says getting started and it gives you all of those things that you can do, yeah. that, that's using promoted links as well. Oh, and this is security trimmed. Cool. So if you can, if you trim the security, they'll only see certain buttons. So if you want certain users to see buttons and not other users to see buttons, very easy to do with item level security. Great. Um, have you all done anything with any of the new workflow engine in 2013? Before we do that, we actually have a question. Um, oh. From uh, in the on the YouTube chat, uh, Troy Britton is asking, how are you embedding the InfoPath form in the page? Uh, we're just using the InfoPath web part. So if you're using um, if you're using SharePoint uh, Enterprise, you can use the InfoPath form web part. So so it's just one of the standard web parts. So if you were to insert insert web part and just pick the InfoPath one. So you have to be using Enterprise though to do it. So you have to be um, have Enterprise installed, and then on your site collection, you have to have make sure that Enterprise features are enabled. And then once you do that, the form web part will find any InfoPath customized items in the entire site that can be displayed there. Great. All right. Thanks for the question, Troy. Um. Laura, I lost what you were asking. You were just starting. Oh, I was just going to say, are you doing anything with the new 2013 workflow engine? Oh, um, that's um, yes, kind of, not a whole lot. Um, we have we're doing our orientation now um, using uh, using SharePoint. So we have a SharePoint site for each. Um, orientation class so we're doing things like when they tell us their t-shirt size there's a workflow that updates another list that has all of the student data with what table they're sitting at whoa um, yeah so we're doing some different things like that we're kind of letting the students um, have discussions and different things like that so using the community features here for that um, and so we actually have a workflow that's running off the discussion list that it totals what team they're on and then gives them points for it. So we have different things like that running because uh, in Rookio, which is our Rackspace orientation, you sit at a table and you compete and you win at the end. You don't really win anything but bragging rights, but it's still really cool. My table won Rookio, just saying. Um, so we can come in and do that and so they can get different points for things. So there's workflows for things like that. Like I was giving away, um, I was give, I was like hiding scavenger hunts inside of, yeah, let's give away some points. You were doing a scavenger hunt inside of SharePoint? No, I was putting the scavenger hunt items inside of SharePoint and then giving points for it. So, like, I would just post this and said, you know, the first team that finds a racker under their flag at their desk gets so many points. And so the people who were monitoring the f discussion thread would find it and then go do it and get the points. So it was kind of a user adoption thing to get people interested in using SharePoint. We didn't tell them what they were. We just said, you know, throughout the week we're going to go put little scavenger hunt things there and if you're paying attention your team can get points and so there is that one uh, we gave them points for making a video of their team going down the slide and then the other one was uh, yes we have a slide in our corporate office by the way yes <laughs> and also retro video games so we gave them a bunch of points if they challenged another table um, to a retro video game off and we didn't tell them where the video games were they just had to find them and do it so here you have tables one two and seven 
um, having a game off. And you can tell we have no dress code as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then they got points for like decorating their table. So the idea with this is that we want to get them um, introduced to SharePoint so that they can from the beginning start using it as a tool. So we come over here, um, every team got a table that they could decorate. Um, I think that one's got some cool stuff on it. And so they would go decorate the tables. Um, so this is the team that was there. They also got points for having uh, Sugar Bear who leads orientation in their um, in their table. So different things along great, those lines. That's a great idea to drive adoption to SharePoint by having a scavenger hunt. I think of that's we would refer to that as gamification, right? That, Something like that. Yeah. yeah, and then we could also get like. Um, what was really cool about this was to get them to collaborate and share stuff so that they could make the connection that it would carry on beyond Rookio. And so we actually had our first really big win with that when um, I had a student who had attended one of the classes email and tell me, I want to use this for my team so we can do the same thing. Where do I go to get the site? And so that's the type of thing that we want to do. We want to prep them to understand what the tools are and be able to start to use them. So you can do different things. Um, here basically it's a spot for them to get all of the content from the week and then um, show their, you know, so they can go in and, and, and access all of the content. And so when they click on it, they can get access to the content that was presented, who presented it, and then any links or anything like that that they have. That's huge. So. That's huge because I remember walking away from that with a stack of papers and going, "Now, where was the link for such and such department?" And yes, and this was <laughs> this was also the first green rookio in that there was no papers handed out, so that was kind of a big deal for rookio. So, because usually it was like uh, 20 copies per every hundred students, and it was yeah. a lot of paper that I still actually have a folder of it right now. <laughs> yep. Um, Great so idea. Different things along those lines and so do you uh, is there any kind of internal user group concept going on inside of Rackspace for people to share their ideas there is it really hasn't gotten a whole um, lot of love let me see if I can remember the URL off the top top of my head community stuff sites Um, we were doing a monthly group and then we had to postpone that because the person who helped us organized it, um, she took a new role. Um, so we've got to get back in and start, hopefully in Q4 we'll be able to start that up again where we just had a monthly meeting of power users. Um, but I have found that a lot of power users connect with each other anyway um, and so they really do help each other do, do things. So let me log on to this site here. Um, So it was just basically a site we went met once a month. We probably had about 15 or 20 people in there once a month. We had about three or four meetings uh, where we would just get somebody who had built something in SharePoint to kind of stand up and talk about it. And then... Um, well, it helps people get ideas for their teams, right? And say, oh, well, yeah. they're doing that. So, oh, they took a spreadsheet that everybody was emailing around and they made it a SharePoint list. Oh, well, we have lots of spreadsheets that we could do that with and just little... People start getting ideas, right? Exactly. And so that was kind of the point of it. So hopefully we're going to be able to uh, pick that up again um, pretty soon. You know, they all wanted to know about the calendar overlay, so we did some stuff. Um, we did some stuff to show show some examples. Like I created a site that's just an example of that uh, so that they could go in and see it. So we did some different things. Um, along that so kind of I built out a step-by-step -step of how to do it so that they could fix it in their site. Neat. Well so speaking of the community sites, you know community sites are a cool new feature in 2013 and personally all I've done so far is demo it and play around with it and try things out in it but I haven't actually really used it in the real world. It, so in real life situations what are, some, what are kind of ways to use this the whole community site template? So, um, Rackspace is no different than any other corporate culture, uh, meaning that there's politics and sacred <laughs> cows um, that exist. 
and so we have not really done a huge push with the community stuff um, because we have got multiple tools in place that do that. Oh, so that's kind true. Of, yeah, it's kind of competing. Yeah, we've made it available, but we've kind of pushed up to the chain of management to say, hey, here's this great tool. We could take advantage of it these ways, but we really should decide as a company what tool are we going to be using. Oh, so, right, because there are all those discussion boards out there already. Yeah, there's discussion boards, there's email lists, then there's three other tools at least. And so where we stand at this is that there is a committee that's kind of helping make that decision, and then there's going to be management push going behind it. So is that going to be SharePoint? Is that going to be Yammer, is that going to be another tool is yet to be determined. Um, so we're using it in smaller cases, but if you notice when you created a new site and we went to rackerstuff.rackspace.com, there was no option to create a community site. Right. Um, so for a few people that have wanted them, I've created them up here and we incorporated it um, into the Rikio site so that they could have discussions, but we didn't necessarily make it. Um, something that was globally available yet. So we're kind of still on the fence with that one, which I think many organizations are probably going to be on the fence with that one. So mm -hmm. it just kind of goes to show that we're really no different, um, no different than anybody else in that sense. Yeah, and you guys watching, feel free to chime in if you have any opinions about that. Um, kind of the way I see community sites working is that like, for example, I used to work in a hospital system, and you have, you know, we had like a site collection for each hospital, so could they do all their internal hospitals and stuff in their own site collections, but when you get to the whole concept of a community, I see that as like going across like a common role. Like you have nurses, but you have nurses in every hospital, but they aren't going to be in the same hospital site collection as each other, but they have the same role and the same stuff in common, so you could have like a whole nurses community and like our whole physical therapist community to where they could actually communicate with people all across the company that do the same role as they do. Like, you know, you might have, we might have at Rackspace, I don't know, a bunch of different, well, you know, there are personal interest groups and things like that, like the fish tanks, but... Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, might, you might have somebody that's a, a developer on, you know... A, uh, some kind of, I don't know, Python developer on one team and then he's maybe the only developer in the, on that team but there are, you know, 800 other Python developers on different teams right. and maybe they would have their own community to talk about trends and things like that with each other. Yeah, and uh, I yeah. mean, and the, the hard part here is just like any other organization, there's a lot of miscellaneous tools that have popped up to do those things. So there's miscellaneous profiling tools and there's miscellaneous search tools. And so it's kind of now there's this tool that can bring it all together. So we really have to work with management to figure out how do we best do that and what tool do we use for what. So instead of like increasing the confusion by rolling out all of these great things inside of SharePoint, we've kind of held back on some features and not really done a lot with them in hopes of avoiding that confusion but bringing them in when the time is right. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's kind of a practical real world thing because a lot of organizations I'm sure are like that. You can't just always go full force on everything all at one time and SharePoint is not always the answer to everything everywhere so so does that does that apply also you know also other places I've seen they, they call and they say well I want my intranet to be SharePoint now I want to take my whole intranet and move it to SharePoint is that uh, I know we have an intranet at Rackspace and it's similar to other intranets I've seen to where like over the years it just came became like a big conglomeration of a bunch of animated GIFs on the home page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the final direction is that the landing page is going to be moved to SharePoint Yay! Um, sometime in Q1 and then it is going to link out to everything um, rackers are going to be able to use SharePoint as an intranet platform, but they're also going to be able to use a collection of other tools, and then they're going to get that freedom between a collection of tools. So it won't be that everything exists inside of SharePoint, but um, it's already pretty common. So Foundation Services has got their site. This is an intranet site that is actually launching today. You guys should see a racker-wide email about it. Um, and then real estate, I thought, yeah, and the real estate is launched as an intranet site as well. And there's a couple of three or four others that have intranet sites that are um, running on SharePoint now. So I think you're going to start to see more and more sites moving. And HR is about to move a bunch of their sites here as well. 
So you can't really technically just take an intranet, intranet site and like click a button and move it to SharePoint. You have to sit there and like look at every single thing on it and like translate it to say, okay, this is how they did it on here. This is what it would be in SharePoint. So it's a lot of work, isn't it? Yes, and the cool thing is is that the rackers are doing that. So like for this site I showed Sylvia uh, one day of what we called intranet jumpstart training which taught them the concepts of creating an intranet, creating pages, doing navigation and different things like that and then she went off and did this all on her own. Nice. Which is awesome. That's great to empower them so they, you know, it puts less stuff in your inbox and in your queue, right? <laughs> yes. And then from there she then worked with uh, Mark and Randy to create a new look and feel, but this is using roll-ups and pages, whereas the real estate one, initial one, is using, um, oh, I keep clicking on the wrong one. Sorry. This is just using columns and text. So she figured out how to do columns and do a table and do text, but then she was like, but then I need to change it every month and I have to go through this manual archiving process and different things like that. However, wouldn't it be great if I could just create new pages and then they just kind of magically came to the top. And so that's when she started working on this other site, that's what this is doing. So when she creates new pages, it's automatically rolling up. So it's kind of like a her requirements were fine, you know, more finely developed as she was going through the process of creating sites. That's true. Do you guys see that a lot? Like once people kind of start to see what SharePoint can do, then their requirements start changing because they start getting ideas? Yep. All the time. <laughs> but a lot of them have been really good to do it in phases. So notice we implemented new things on a brand new site not necessarily going back and keep redoing the same site over and over. So it seems to work out pretty well. Um, I think that's all I've got necessarily to show. I don't know if you guys have more questions or... Oh, Josh says, are your intranet sites security trimmed as well? I guess he's talking about the actual real intranet. Hmm. They're not, but everyone at Rackspace can see everything at Rackspace. Yeah, so it's all it's only internal, a, yeah. Oh, yeah, from an internal perspective. So there's really not a whole lot of need to security trim. The things that do need to be security trimmed, we're actually in other systems for that. So like HR systems and stuff like that is done through an HR tool. So that's all managed that way. Cool. Um, what else? Do you all have any, can you all think of any other questions? Because this, all this stuff is, is new to me. It's really, I'm really excited to see all this. I, Makes have we happy. tracked the amount of time that this takes? I mean, I'm just imagining a customer coming to us and being like, I saw your video, and I'd kind of like you to do the same thing for us. <laughs> Jennifer? Wait, okay, Stephen, you cut out, and I missed the actual question. I Listen just fail. wondered if we were tracking the amount of time that is being spent on the project. Oh, um, because he so said like people that are watching this video right now might come to us and say, hey, can you do that same thing for us too? Yeah, so I'm an interesting resource because 50% of my time is actually dedicated to only helping rockers do this. So if someone was looking and saying, okay, we want to do these same types of things, what type of resource does it take? Um, so at a minimum, you've got a resource that... Uh, proficient in SharePoint out of the box and the different things that, that you can do, dedicated 50% of their time to just building out these solutions and helping them do things. And with that being said, I have a whole wait list of people who are wanting things as well. Joelle is now starting to step up and I keep cornering her and saying, hey, do you want to help so-and-so? Um, so tracking time, I think each individual solution is different, but the biggest thing is having um, having a dedicated SharePoint resource that's kind of always there to help people through it, but it's at least 50% of the time and probably could be a full-time resource um, of just kind of a SharePoint consultant. So give us a bucket of hours, man. We'll help you do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Have we done anything? I know SharePoint 2013 search is huge and it's really, really cool and they added all this new stuff. Have we done anything fancy with search at all? Uh, nothing fancy. Um, we are making a decision at the end of November as to which uh, search solution 
is going to be that at Rackspace. So we are actually doing a bunch of testing with that in the next week or so. So that might be a good follow-up at the end of the year to kind of oh. do a power hour to talk about what we did to determine which tool did we use because we're going to set up some searching against non-SharePoint platforms and different things like that. So we have a big effort to start on that next week. I was teaching, uh, I was teaching a SharePoint uh, 2013 course last week and one of, like we have a whole hour dedicated to search in that thing and I was talking about like all this stuff you can do in search and the ways that you configure it and all the different things that you the queries and the and the, the things that you can search for and the things that people you can look at what people are searching for and and it's it, it could be an entire full-time job just to basically manage the search functionality do you oh yeah so do you see us if we if we pick SharePoint like getting to the point where we would actually make use of all that coolness and and do that and spend time working on it? Cuz right now I don't think our intranet's really searchable at all. I think way. someone would. Yeah. Um I'm not sure where that resource would come from because I mean that resource really has to understand the data and understand the business cuz configuring it inside of SharePoint is the easy part. It's understanding and making the right decisions around it. So I think that that would be when we go make a uh, presentation to say this is the tool that we think we should use, we're going to have that, you know, with that, here are the resources that we think need to be in place to manage that tool going forward. So I think it would be the assumption that if we're going to use SharePoint, we'd have to have someone. We'd have to have a search manager. Sounds oh, like okay. a title for somebody. I mean, but somebody would have to be babysitting it. It's so funny. It's one of those things that every SharePoint training and, and, and sessions I go to about search, they always say that you need to have a whole person just for search. But all companies are just like, yeah, we just we just turned it on and it, it works fine. <laughs> you know, they don't want to invest that <laughs> right money with to some, somebody like that. Okay. Every well, time uh, I give the admin class at the end, there's always you know one or two people who are like, you guys should do a class on search. Uh, oh, Jennifer, you can turn your, your camera back on. You can turn your screen share off now. Go ahead, Stephen. But we just never, I mean, you know, sort of like you were saying, everybody's interested in it, but then once they realize the the level of effort involved, it, it becomes very hard to sell. I agree. But, but there's it's so cool. <laughs> there's just so much you can do in there. Yeah, and that must be really, really big companies that do stuff like that, you think. Or somebody that's got like a a very strong need to search for the data. So like I was working with a call center um, and they needed people that were on the phone to be able to quickly get to data. So they had a very strong business need that justified having the extra resources to search and find the data because it directly impacted call happiness. So I think it kind of depends on how you're using search. Um, okay. I think that as more and more things happen with search, so like for instance in 2013 something that we did, um, and we were very early adopters of 2013. If you guys have seen the always on search, um, always on, that was something that our admins are like, no I don't really think we need always on because it takes a bunch of extra resources and I was probably like, you know, I was like okay well whatever you guys think is best. Um, it took about two months and then as I started building solutions and I wanted to use the query web parts and different things like that, that we had to have the always on search to running to actually make it work um, and have all those pieces there. So we went through a process of saying, okay, we're not going to do always on search. We're going to crawl incremental every couple of hours to running always on and buying additional hardware to oh, support nice. the environment. So that's kind of a real world example of things that we've even done with search. Um, and so we, we didn't turn it on until we had a business case to turn it on. Good. Good to know. Okay. Um, so, Jennifer, are you doing speaking at anything anytime soon or got anything coming up that we should know about? Um, Saturday, I will be at SPS Redmond. Um, and then the next Saturday, I'll be at Houston Tech Fest. Cool. Wow. And then kind of far off, very, very far off, we have SP TechCon coming up. So, Yes, that's, that's far, 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 far away in a that's, land. That's at the end of April. <laughs> yes, that is a far time away. I haven't gotten through December to worry about April yet. But yes, SP TechCon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's coming up. And then, but before that is the big SharePoint conference. In yes, March. I will be at the big SharePoint conference. 
that's going to be exciting. Um, yes. Anybody else have any like SharePoint type events that are going on that you? Oh, Tavis, you have something, right? Sorry, I had to do all my unmuting. Um, yeah, I'll be speaking at the Tri-State SharePoint Users Group uh, early next month. So. Um, that's in the covered. Cincinnati, Ohio area. That is correct. Yes. So uh, we'll be covering kind of a, a BI 101 class on all things you should know about BI starting out, or maybe even before you start. <laughs> Great. That sounds well, awesome. In November, I'll be speaking at the Montgomery SharePoint User Group. And what will you be speaking about? Uh, just Excel services, the presentation, similar to what I talked about last week on this call, or on our, on our Google Hangout. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Let's see, do we have any other questions from the chat, from the discussion, the comments? I guess not. All right. Well, uh, next week, oh, what are we doing next week, guys? Let me see. We have a project management and um, planning and design call with one of our Rackspace project managers and Mike. Yeah, so Mike's going to kind of lead that conversation, but we have um, Aubrey Peter, which is one of our project managers, as our little guest star, and they're going to talk all about managing projects and using SharePoint and and Joelle you've actually helped with some of the stuff they're doing in SharePoint to manage projects right a little bit yeah yeah so that'll be a so we're not only talking about managing projects about SharePoint but we manage projects in SharePoint <laughs> so <laughs> kind of a lot of different ways you could slice and dice that Okay. Well, uh, thanks so much, Jennifer, for joining us this week. We had to do this That's more fun. often. Yeah, it was. I, w I had a lot of fun getting to see all that internal stuff that you've been working on. That's very cool. Yeah, it was awesome. I got some ideas. <laughs> I love it. Happy to do it again. Cool. All right. Well, everybody, um, we will see everyone next week, same place, same time, every Wednesday at 11 Central. And we're all signing out for the day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.